relative pronouns and relative clauses. Today we're going to learn the relative pronouns and relative clauses. I've got a brilliant story for the magazine. What kind of story? It's a story which was in the local news yesterday. A boy who couldn't swim fell into the river by accident and a man jumped in to save him. This is the photo that was in the local newspaper. And who's this woman, Leslie? She's the one who saved them both. In the end, the man got a cramp and he couldn't swim. Relative pronouns. Who? That's the man who lives next door. Which? The train which goes to London leaves at 8. Whose? The woman whose car was stolen went to the police station. That. That's the man that lives next door. The train that goes to London leaves at 8. Relative pronouns. Relative pronouns refer to people, animals, and things. In speech, we use relative pronouns to provide information about someone or something. Los pronombres relativos eh, se refieren a personas, animales y cosas. Coloquialmente, utilizamos los pronombres relativos para dar información acerca de alguien o alguna cosa. Estos son los pronombres relativos. These are the relative pronouns. Who, used for people. Who, que es usado para las personas. For example, we have, the lady who works in that shop is John's mother. Then we have which, used for things or animals. Usado para cosas o animales. The car which is parked outside our home is Mr. Taylor's. Whose? Used to state that something belongs to someone. It may refer to people, animals, or things. That's the girl whose father is my English teacher. Whose? Usado para decir que algo pertenece a alguien. Puede referirse a personas, animales, o a cosas. That's the girl whose father is my, my English teacher. That. The lady that works in that shop is John's mother. Lady equals person. The car that's parked outside our house is Mr. Taylor's. Car equals thing. Relative pronouns follow the noun they refer to. That's the boy who stole by my bike. Aquí vemos con el pronombre relativo that. En el primer ejemplo... The lady that works in that shop in John's mother. Lady es una persona. O sea, puede ser usado en el caso de personas. The car that's parked outside our house is Mr. Taylor's. Car es una cosa. Y después dice que los pronombres relativos van seguidos del sustantivo al que ellos refieren. Por ejemplo, acá tenemos that's the boy, boy siendo el sustantivo, y va seguido del pronombre relativo, who stole my bike. Ese es el orden en el que va. Los pronombres relativos van seguidos de el sustantivo a, a los que ellos refieren. Chip. Whose may mean two different things. It may be the short version of who is or the short version of who has. That's a boy whose, who is, Leslie's neighbor. Whose is a word which is used to say who is the owner of something. Whose is always followed by a noun. Is that the girl whose father is an astronaut? Aquí tenemos una nota. Nos indica que whose puede significar dos cosas diferentes. Puede ser la versión corta de who is o la versión corta de who has. Como en el ejemplo que vemos, that's the boy whose, who is, Leslie's neighbor. Y después nos dice que whose es una palabra que es usada para decirnos quién es el dueño de algo. Whose va siempre seguido de un sustantivo. Por ejemplo, tenemos, is that the girl whose father? Whose va seguido del sustantivo father. 
whose father is an astronaut. Now we have defining relative clauses. The sentences which begin with relative pronouns are called relative clauses. There are two kinds of relative clauses. Defining relative clauses are relative clauses which contain details a sentence cannot do without. Without such details, the sentence would not have a full meaning. This is the watch which John gave me for my birthday. Relative pronouns may be omitted in defining relative clauses. That's the car which we bought last week. That's the car we bought last week. Defining relative clauses. Las oraciones que empiezan con relative pronouns son llamadas relative clauses. Existen dos clases de relative clauses. Defining relative clauses son las cláusulas que contienen detalles en una oración en las que los defining relative clauses contienen detalles muy importantes en una oración. Sin esos detalles la, la oración no tendría sentido completo. Por ejemplo, we have this is the watch which John gave me for my birthday. En los defining relative clauses, los pronombres relativos pueden ser omitidos. Por ejemplo, tenemos estos dos ejemplos. That's the car which we bought last week. Y podemos omitir ese which. Y podríamos decir, that's the car we bought last week. Non-defining relative clauses. Non-defining relative clauses provide more information about someone or something. They are not absolutely necessary for a sentence to have a full meaning. Um, with the non-defining clauses, uh, these clauses give us extra information. It's information that is not important or completely important to convey the meaning in a sentence. En los non-defining relative clauses se da información de alguien o alguna cosa, información que no es absolutamente necesario para que la oración tenga un sentido completo. Por ejemplo, aquí tenemos This castle, which was built in 1839, is the oldest building in our town. The castle is the oldest building in the town. The time it was built is not an important detail. ¿Ok? Entonces, el, el año en que fue construido no es un, una información importante para poder decir que el castillo es la estructura más antigua en nuestro pueblo. Está dando información extra. Entonces vendría a ser un non-defining relative clauses. Then it says, non-defining relative clauses are always placed between two commas. Stanley, who is Peter's best friend, comma, is the, the editor of the school magazine. Relative pronouns cannot be omitted in non-defining relative pronouns. Arthur Richards who is my favorite singer, was born in 1975. Not Arthur Richard is my favorite singer, was born in 1975. Ok, con los non-defining relative clauses, siempre tienen que estar colocados entre comas. Aquí tenemos este ejemplo. Stanley, coma, who is Peter's best friend, coma, is the editor of the school magazine. Y después nos dice que los relative pronouns no pueden ser omitidos en los non-defining relative clauses. Entonces teníamos que decir Arthur Richards, coma, who is my favorite singer, coma, was born in 1975. No podríamos decir Arthur Richard coma, is my favorite singer, coma, was born in 1975. 
siempre tendríamos que poner los relative pronouns en el caso del non-defining relative clauses. A diferencia de los defining relative clauses, recordemos que pueden ser omitidos, como en este ejemplo, that's the car which we bought last week, and that's the car we bought last week. Ok, eso sería todo con la explicación de los Relative Clauses. Si tienen alguna pregunta, la pueden hacer en YouTube o a través de la página japonico.co.cc. Thank you very much.